campaign plane today to go do some post-debate events in Virginia. A reporter at Politico.com named Dylan Byers noticed a very surprising sight on the Mitt Romney campaign plane. It's this guy. The Romney campaign is apparently credentialed as a member of the press corps to travel with Governor Romney on board his plane. This guy from WorldNet Daily. That's the website that has done all of the exclusive reporting about President Obama's birth certificate. At the WorldNet Daily Superstore right now, you can still buy the Where's the Real Birth Certificate yard sign. But maybe now that Jerome Corsi's book on Where's the Obama Birth Certificate is down to 78 cents on Amazon.com, Mr. Corsi has moved on to a new conspiracy theory about President Obama, which is that the president is secretly gay. I should actually, I should say secretly gay married. I should say secretly gay married to a whole bunch of different guys who he killed because he's a secret gay married murderer. Also, the ring the president wears says he's a Muslim and he's gay married and he's a murderer. That's Jerome Corsi. The Romney campaign apparently credentialed Jerome Corsi today and put him on the campaign plane with the candidate. But you know, honestly, the World Net Daily website um, kind of sucks now. <laughs> I mean, it's always been, but, but now that they have tried to move on from the birth certificate conspiracy to their new conspiracy theory about Obama being secretly gay married, it's clear that it's really just not giving them the same juice that it used to. They're not pushing that many stories. Nobody's really linking to them. The best stuff in their superstore now is all about how to protect yourself from home invasions. I mean, it's just sad. It's clear that they're not able to energize as many people as they used to with their crazy conspiracies. And I think that is because of what feels good about a good conspiracy theory. What gives conspiracy theories their appeal? Like, like in the case of the birth certificate, right? What those folks were saying, Donald Trump and WorldNet Daily and Orly Tates and Joe Arpaio and Steve Kay and all the rest of them, what they were claiming, even if you didn't follow all the steps about Kenya and the grandmother and the newspaper and how the infant must have been moved and the pre-planning and all this stuff, whatever, even if you didn't follow all the steps, ultimately what they were selling you was the basic idea that President Obama is not actually president. He is secretly foreign. He is ineligible, therefore, to hold the office. And so, therefore, even though it seems like we've got this man as president, feel better. He's not really president. He's not eligible to hold the office. So he's secretly not holding the office. Don't you feel better? The problem with WorldNet Daily now is that their new theory, President Obama being secretly gay married, it doesn't exactly elicit the same feeling, right? Nobody needs to be comforted about that. Nobody needs to be comforted that President Obama but doesn't really love Michelle, right? Nobody needs to feel that way. But that dynamic in conservative politics that animates those conspiracy theories, it does not only happen on the fringes. We've seen it over and over again as conservatives and Republicans increasingly isolate themselves in our country. And they stay more and more inside a media bubble where they do not hear any neutral or contrasting points of view, where you can go mm -hmm. all day from conservative talk radio to conservative cable news to conservative blogs to Republican politicians, importantly, who are playing only to those talk radio hosts and cable news shows and bloggers in a loop that just gives people what they want to hear in those settings. And in that environment, when something happens that makes people feel uncomfortable, there is an almost irresistible impulse on the right now to just assure people that that uncomfortable thing isn't really happening. Unbelievable jobs numbers. These Chicago guys will do anything, can't debate, so change the numbers. Look, I don't know if, what, what the right number is, but I'll tell you, these numbers don't smell right when you think about where the economy is right now. Sadly, no. Uh, the unemployment rate really is below 8%. I know it feels awful to you because of your politics. But the unemployment rate really is below 8%. It is 7.8%, truly. Unemployment is going down, just as a factual matter. Why would Congressman Ryan, in defiance of facts, suggest otherwise? No, I think what he was saying is the truth, which is unemployment's higher today than it was when the president took office. No. That is not true. I know you want to think that Congressman Ryan said the truth when he said that, but he did not. The unemployment rate is factually going down, and that must feel awful to you guys, but it really is the truth, truly. That impulse on the right now to not just downplay or distract from or try to explain away things they don't like, like people have always done in politics. The impulse now not to just do that normal stuff, but to instead assert that uncomfortable facts just aren't real facts, 
that the president isn't really president, that the unemployment rate hasn't really gone down, that closed loop, cuddle yourself, la 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 la, pretend it isn't happening impulse, that is what made the right's presidential candidate last night walk into this horrible wall. I'm the president, and I'm always responsible. And that's why nobody's more interested in finding out exactly what happened than I did. The day after the attack, Governor, I stood in the Rose Garden, and I told the American people and the world that we were going to find out exactly what happened, that this was an act of terror. I, I think it's interesting the president just said something, which, which is that on the day after the attack, he went to the Rose Gar Garden and said that this was an act of terror. You said in the Rose Garden, the day after the attack, it was an act of terror. It was not a Please spontaneous proceed. demonstration. Is that what you're saying? Please proceed, Governor. I, I, I want to make sure we get that for the record, because it took the president 14 days before he called the attack in Benghazi an act of terror. Get the transcript. It, 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 he did, in, in fact, sir. So let me, let me call it an act of Can terror. Can you say that a little Garden. louder, Candy? Mitt Romney, repeating a story told about this subject on the right in a way that is very satisfying to conservatives. The way this story is told on the right is a story that tells conservatives exactly what they want to hear and what they want to believe about that bad, bad President Obama. A comforting story about how this bad president never used that word terror in talking about these attacks until two weeks after they happened. This awful guy. I mean, that story must feel great if you are a conservative, if you're against this president. And if you only experience reality as mediated through the conservative media, you might think that is really what happened. That is not what happened. No acts of terror will ever shake the resolve of this great nation, alter that character, or eclipse the light of the values that we stand for. Today we mourn for more Americans who represent the very best of the United States of America. We will not waver in our commitment to see that justice is done for this terrible act, and make no mistake, justice will be done. You can count down three, two, one until the right starts saying that that tape has been doctored, the transcript has been forged from a fax machine in Hawaii. Mitt Romney getting it wrong last night because he apparently consumes the right-wing version of reality instead of the real reality outside the right-wing conservative media bubble. That was the story of the night last night when he just face-planted on that story. Just a shocking, stylistic, and substantive face-plant by an excitable candidate who decided to take a leaping roundhouse punch while his opponent was standing there at his most presidential. And the guy taking the punch not only missed his target, he punched himself out in the process. Splat. That was the story of last night. But the story of today was that the right decided that was too painful. The right decided what happened to Mr. Romney there felt too bad that they were going to make themselves feel better by telling themselves that that did not actually happen, telling themselves that Mr. Romney actually did land that punch, that he was right and he looked great for it. Look at the lower third on Fox News today when they were talking about this. This was on their day-side programming, which Fox says is supposedly when they're not doing any opinion at all, just straight news, fair and balanced. Look at it. Debate interruption by Candy Crowley steps on major moment for Governor Romney. Oh, darn that Candy Crowley, her pointless interruption ruined Mitt Romney's big moment when he was just nailing Obama for not saying the word terror in the Rose Garden that day. No acts of terror will ever shake the resolve of this great nation. In right-wing world, President Obama never said that. Part of the reason I think this country would be better off if the website PolitiFact didn't exist is because PolitiFact has encouraged relativism on the subject of whether or not stuff happened as a mainstream thing. So like when Mitt Romney wrote an op-ed titled Let Detroit Go Bankrupt, and then he went on CBS News and defended his call to let Detroit go bankrupt, including that headline. PolitiFact fact-checked whether or not Mitt Romney did say let Detroit go bankrupt. And they found that half true. Because basically they don't think that Mitt Romney likes to be quoted saying let Detroit go bankrupt or something, even though he did. So half true? PolitiFact last night looked into whether or not President Obama used the phrase act of terror the day after the Benghazi attack when he gave that speech in the Rose Garden. No acts of terror will ever shake the resolve of this great nation. PolitiFact, in its assessment, said, oh, yes, he did say that, but it's really only half true because people on the right say maybe he didn't mean it when he said it. This infection is leaving the conservative media through purportedly neutral arbiters of fact like PolitiFact. These baldly false conservative feel-good assertions about knowable facts that come from the right end up becoming just the other side of a political issue. We're taking an objective look, and that is bull. 
Barack Obama was born in Hawaii. The unemployment rate is below 8%. The day after the Benghazi attack, the president called it an act of terror. Do whatever you need to do to make yourself feel better, but do not confuse your WorldNet Daily caliber therapeutic conservative alternative reality fantasy babble for what actually happened. Because stuff really does actually happen. And eventually, you really do have to deal with it. First Look is up next.